seven and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day. Also, has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content. You can get the Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So you can come over, check it out. You're not only going to get a great newsletter. Steve has a huge amount of information with his newsletter that you're going to understand how to look at the market each and every trading day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Game seven is going on tonight. I, can you believe it? I mean, uh, that, you know, these guys are so impressive. It's unbelievable, actually. They are. So we've got the Florida Panthers that they're going to be playing the Hurricanes. I don't know when the first game is scheduled. I, I know they've got to get through tonight's game yeah. to figure out whether, you know, who, who's playing who, whether it's Dallas or Seattle right. uh, that's playing uh, Las Vegas. I wasn't that happy that there was a the game came on on a Sunday evening after Mother's Day at 10 o'clock at night last night. So that was a, that was a struggle to watch that game. I was asleep. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. But uh, so so definitely look. So as you mentioned, hey Tom, we're we're halfway through the month, and uh, you and I haven't really talked about the seasonal. So I thought that I would what we would do today is spend a little bit of time on on those. Go. Cool. And th this first chart here, uh, this is now what I've done is I've just taken the last 25 years worth of data because oh. I've got 25 years worth of data for the S and P, the Dow. And the NASDAQ, I only have 20 years worth of data for the Russell. In the Dow, we can go back 100 years, but I just thought we'd try to keep things consistent. So we're just looking basically the last two decades out here. So over the last 25 years, the Dow has traded in essence like this, what we see on this chart here. Don't be paying attention to prices. or It's really more of a directional thing as opposed to whether it really takes out lows or takes out highs. But yes. You know, we're really looking for potential turning points. And what's also nice about this data, especially for, for, for day traders, Tom, if you take a look at the bottom left here, over the last 25 years, and this is for the Dow, you can see that, you know, Monday, Tuesday are great days for the Dow. Wednesday, Thursday, okay, and Friday, not so much. Okay. And it also is nice, you know, just on the bottom to be able to take a look at the, the uh, which months are seasonally favorable versus unfavorable. And what we can see here, where, you know, if we take just the last 25 years, the whole sell in May cycle, which is May through October, we can see that on average, it really is around May 1st. That identifies the top for the Dow, and it's not until October 9th when we get a significant low for the rest of the year out there. So something for us to keep in mind. If we take a look at the same uh, time frame, 25 years, but we switch it to the S&P 500. By the way, the red vertical line, folks, that's where we're at today, just so you can get a feel for where we're at. In the case of the S&P 500, it also has done the same with the top May 1st and a bottom uh, in October. Now, interestingly enough, the S&P has terrible Mondays. It doesn't like Mondays. That's Apparently wild, huh? Apparently, it's too hard during the week. But Tuesdays, it loves Tuesdays out there. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, transpires here uh, tomorrow. But again, just good information for the uh, day traders out there. Now, during the last 25 years, Tom, here's what the NDX chart looks like, and totally different than what we just looked at for the Dow and the S&P 500. I, I identify where the um, where the NDX one, where May 1st is for the NDX 100 in October 9th. So it still maintains that same pattern. Yes. But during the whole process, and as you talked about, we've been going sideways. If you just looked at, you know, daily candles for four or five days, it's been a larger consolidation if we open it up a bit. But what we see here inside this uh, NASDAQ chart over the last 25 years is really a consolidating period of time. So we don't really typically see a bottom inside of, uh, well, the first significant bottom we see inside of the NASDAQ is around June 14th, typically leads to a summertime rally, July 17th, and then down into that October 9th uh, time frame issue. So we've got those three that we've taken a look at. And during the last 20 years, as I said, only 20 years worth of data for the Russell, its chart patterns also look different, looks significantly different. In fact, it's right around March 15th when the Russell puts in a, a significant bottom out here and we go I'm not going to focus on the Russell today but folks can go back take a look at their charts and then typically we don't see the Russell really top out until uh, the uh, third week of July moves lower has a little rally up into September and then down into October so and also the Russell 2000 hates Mondays 
it loves over the last 20 years, its favorite day of the week is Tuesday. So, folks, we'll see what uh, Tuesday uh, brings for us. So our primary focus today, Tom, I wanted to just really be on the uh, NASDAQ, the NDX 100. And the reason is, and the reason to shift my focus there is because that's where we got the most recent signal change. Okay. So one of the patterns that, that I look for are what I refer to as these road momentum, road momentum indicator patterns. Um, it's a pattern that I teach subscribers, so anybody out there can learn this pattern. I give the exact specifics. In theory, in basic theory, it's where we have price moving higher with less relative energy. It includes more than that. But the one thing about each of the patterns that I trade well, I can't say each of them. Some of the patterns that I trade require you to get a bullish or bearish reversal candle to confirm either the top or the bottom. In this case here on Friday, we had a key reversal session. We had a bearish uh, engulfing or bearish sash candle out there. So we had everything take place to signal to us on Friday that we got a top. We do have a top inside the uh, NASDAQ 100. What we don't have is we don't have confirmation of a break of support. In fact, you were taking a look at just on the intraday, you know, kind of a similar type of a thing. But here, when I take a look at support, I'm using uh, profile levels. In this case here, price is trading above the top of its profile. And that little green, red, squiggly line on my chart, which is the oscillator change line, it's real strong momentum. So we do have a top inside the index 100. It says we need to be careful or prepared. And uh, if we take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame chart, so the top panel shows the daily NQ on the left weekly NQ on the upper right, lower left is the NASDAQ 100, lower right is the weekly NASDAQ 100. Each of these are matching each other. And we have on the weekly charts, if you look on the right hand side, we have TD9 count top. So it's bar number nine. When we get to that and we have a successful bar number nine, it tells us about a topping signal. In the case of the NQ, it's very close to its breakdown level where prices are broken down from at 13,453. Now on a TD9 count pattern, Tom, the top can take place on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So it won't be until the end of this week that we have the fully completed pattern. But between the daily and the weekly, it really does say that we need to be careful here. Um, and, uh, and remember, the, the NDX 100 is kind of lining up right now with a seasonal pattern. Now, this seasonal pattern would really only take us lower for a couple of weeks out there. But uh, it, this would really match up with, with, some of the, with some of the intraday data that you were looking at as far as markets moving lower, what you're taking a look at from a volume standpoint. So the seasonal piece of it and then the daily topping signal is in place. Now all we need to do is we need to get sellers to move to the downside. If I do this real quickly and take a look at the top five instruments inside the NASDAQ 100, yes. we take a look at Microsoft on Friday. It confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top on its daily time frame. Weekly's got a TD9 count. Apple has the same thing. It, it confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top a couple of days prior. It has a TD9 count on the weekly. Amazon, though, has a sell the D point pattern. Okay. And it has a TD9 count on the weekly. Those are the top three. Uh, there are no topping signals for NVIDIA. I heard you pull up the NVIDIA chart. Looks yeah. like this thing just wants to keep moving higher. And the same for Google. Google's got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, it gets us to about the 130 level out there. So those uh, five stocks represent. I thought I'd written it down somewhere. Somewhere around 48%, I believe, right. of the uh, of the entire NDX 100. So we just need to be on guard, uh, folks. The seasonal say that in the case of the NDX 100, which can drag our markets lower, we really need to be on guard. And you know, Steve, what I remember, you know, we've been doing these interviews so long that, you know, the sell in May go away. You were showing us a couple years ago that it's really closer to the end of May, not the That's beginning true. of May. That's true. That's yeah. True. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow, Steve. You too, Tom. Take care. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. The goal.